Well, that's done. What should I work on next? I'm always telling students in person and on my videos that you need to code more, that it's not enough to sit here and listen to tutorials and watch videos, although I love that you watch my channel, but it's not gonna be enough. You need to actually get out there, get your hands on the code and actually write code. You need to do stuff if you wanna hone your skills and really master your craft. Because let's face it, listening to people talk, even me, is not going to make you a programmer. It just doesn't work that way. But this advice naturally leads to another question and that is, okay, I need to code more, what should I code? What should I work on next? And that's a good question. Let me see if I can help. This can be a really tough situation for new programmers, not because there's a shortage of things to do, but because you don't know what's easy and hard. You don't know what's available, what you, what's possible. And then when you start looking around, the range of possibilities becomes so vast that it can be a bit overwhelming. And so a lot of students get overwhelmed and they say, you know, I'm just going to wait for my professor to assign me a project and then that's what I'll work on. And that's definitely not the answer. You all really need to be programming on your own. You don't wait for someone to tell you what to do. You need to take the initiative. You need to be building your skill set. You need to be taking responsibility for making sure that you are mastering your craft. And giving recommendations on this question is actually pretty tough because it depends on you. It depends on where you're at. It depends on the skills you're trying to build. It depends on what eventually you wanna do with your career. And so it's hard for me to give just one answer. It's hard for me to say, yeah, you should definitely build a web server or you should really build a game, right? It, it depends on you. But if you're having a hard time pinning down one thing to do next, my goal today is just to give you a few heuristics, a few ideas that might help you in deciding what to do next. You know, just to get the ideas coming. My first suggestion, especially for those of you that are just getting started, is to try to pick a project that helps you better understand how your computer works under the hood. Projects that help you go a little deeper, that help you understand the nuts and bolts, and that better help you understand what the machine is doing, how it actually functions. These are super valuable projects. Some ideas you might pursue, reading and writing files. Are there new ways to do it that you haven't explored? What about pipes? What about network programming? Maybe you've programmed a simple client and server, but can you make it do more interesting things? Can you change its behavior in some non-trivial way? Maybe you wanna learn more about how your machine's virtual memory system works. Maybe you wanna learn more about how code libraries work and how they're compiled and, and built and linked at runtime or at compile time. All of these are great ideas to help you dig a little deeper and better understand the landscape of your machine. Keep in mind that at least for me, I find that this kind of project is more like exploratory surgery. I'm exploring a function call or a feature of my machine and I'm really just trying stuff out. I'm turning knobs, I'm changing things and I'm just trying to see what happens. With this kind of project, I often start with a question, you know, how does this thing work? How does X work where X is the topic that I wanna dig into? I often check out the man pages or find a really simple example of the use of that function and then I try to build from there. I try to try out different flags, different arguments, different scenarios and just see what happens. It's experimental. Now, if you're nervous about experimenting with your machine, maybe try using a virtual machine and that's gonna allow you to explore and play around in like a sandbox without worrying that you're gonna bork your machine. If this isn't explicit enough and you're like, well, yeah, but what should I look into? Let me give you a suggestion and that is SHM get. I'm not gonna go into this function today. I'm not gonna really tell you even what it does except that it has something to do with shared memory and I'm gonna talk about it in a future video. So if you need a topic to explore, go explore SHM get, see what you can come up with, come up with your own example code. And then when I do my video on it, you'll look at it and say, hey, I know that one. And you know, my example code's better than Jacob's. That would be awesome. So my second tip, which is kind of like the first one, is to look at other computer programs. Look at Chrome, look at your video games, look at Microsoft Office, look at different programs that you use on your machine and look at what they do and think, I wonder how they do this. If ever you identify some piece of functionality that you don't know how you would add to your own code, that's a great place to look and explore. For example, maybe you look at programs that update themselves and you think, I wonder if I could do that. I wonder if I can make my own program so that it actually checks a server for updates and then like replaces itself. And maybe you're in a place where you don't even wanna get that advanced and you're just like, how do I contact a server and get some data back? And I have a video on that in case you're interested. But at this point, you're just looking at other software for ideas of things that your programs could do and then using that to inspire you to go explore and try to figure out how to do them. Tip number three is ask other programmers. 
Beginning programmers are not social enough. I know some of you came to computer science thinking, hey, this is great. I don't have to talk to other people. I can just interact with machines. But interacting with other students, other programmers, and looking at what they are doing and what they're working on is a great source of inspiration. Talk with your peers. Don't necessarily copy their ideas, but you know, listen to what they're working on. Listen to what they've done. Listen to what they think is really cool. Get them to brainstorm ideas with you. And if your friends are the kind that see you as competition and like, like don't want to share their ideas, then they're rotten friends and you need new friends. And so go make new friends that are willing to be more collaborative and to have fun and to help you learn together. Of course, in this, the internet can be your friend as well. There's lots of sources for information. Just search around for interesting programming projects that can help you learn different things. That's definitely a resource that shouldn't be overlooked. My fourth tip is to pick a new algorithm. Look up an algorithm online and try to understand how it works. Keep in mind when you're learning to program that you're not just learning a language. You're not just learning C or Java or Ruby or Python, you're learning how to think logically. You're learning how to think mathematically and to solve problems in a systematic way. And so studying algorithms and, and seeing how to solve different kinds of problems and looking at existing code maybe on GitHub and looking at how they solve particular problems can be a great resource in becoming a better programmer. But again, keep in mind, don't just read other people's code, don't just read about algorithms, but actually implement them. Strategy number five, evaluate your pain points. What are the things that you do on your machine that are a pain? What are the things that you just think, ah, this should be so much easier, I wish this would go away? Also at the same time, think about what kind of tool on my machine would be really useful for me? Because finding coding projects that solve a real problem that you have, basically scratching your own itch, not only have the potential to make your life easier, but it's easy to stay motivated about something that matters to you. And this doesn't have to be anything really fancy or complicated. So let me give you a quick example. My family is very indecisive when it comes to picking movies. A few months ago, one of my daughters, who's learning to program, decided she was going to write a program that would take the list of movies, basically look through and see what we had available, and then randomly select five to narrow down our decision. And then those were the only five we could pick. And it was a simple program, it was fun, it was useful, and we all really enjoyed it, and she got some more experience. Because hey, if you're working on something you care about, you're actually more likely to be motivated enough to actually do it. And just to let you in on a secret, I do this professionally all the time. When I came to Clemson, they informed me that I had to take role. I won't go into the details or the reasons, but I didn't enjoy taking role, so I decided to make things a little bit better. So a few years ago, I spent some time building my own online role system. It's a simple web app, it only took a few hours, and it was an opportunity to get a little more experience and up my web programming game. And to this day, I really like it, I use it all the time, I actually have some colleagues that have started using it in their class. And so for me, I find it really valuable to work on things that I'm not gonna throw away. It's not just a dummy program. It's something that I'm actually going to use. So I hope this is helping you to start to see how you can identify opportunities for future programming projects in your own study. If you're interested in taking this topic deeper and exploring more about how I help students become confident programmers, I do have a new course that's coming out very soon. Some of you are already on the mailing list. If you're not on the mailing list and you're interested, please jump on the mailing list and we'll let you know as more information becomes available. It's coming soon. There's a link in the description. Of course, if you're looking for other free tips and tutorials, you can check out my other videos, including these. Subscribe if you don't want to miss next video. And until then, happy coding.